What's up guys, welcome to part three of my Revit 2 3ds Max workflow. This one is all about how I start to throw materials onto my designs. One of the cool things about using Corona is that it comes with its own basic material library, so you should be covered for your basic wood, concrete, metal, glass, etc. For other materials, you could go the free route, but I guarantee you're gonna end up going down a black hole, finding all sorts of crappy textures that tile, you'll have to make your own bump maps, you're essentially you're gonna find all sorts of ticky tacky technical things to build your own materials. But as an architect, I think your time's better spent elsewhere rather than learning how to be a full-time 3D artist. The cool alternative is nowadays you have things like Quixel Megascans or Adobe Substance, which are subscription services you can pay for and you just immediately get access to these awesome libraries full of already set up materials for you. You can pay for a month, load up on a handful of materials, see if this workflow works for you. And if it doesn't, you're not wasting a ton of time or money. That's just my two cents. It's really up to you where you find these materials, but just make sure that you're valuing your time. In terms of how you use these materials, like anything in Max, it can be incredibly complicated and convoluted, but 90% of the time, it's just three or four different tools that you're gonna be using. Got a couple links below if you feel like you need to jump ahead. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit me up if you have any questions, and let's get at it. So if you set your model up as I do, all of your materials should be grouped as a single object already. One glass, one metal, one siding material, one concrete. The first thing you want to do is turn off the material override we set up to get our lights and cameras set up in the previous video. To do that, just go to the render setup dialog, the scene tab, and just click off that material override. But now that we've done that, I like to actually apply that white material to everything in the scene so that I have a clean slate to work from. You'll sometimes get a lot of extra junk in these Revit models, and this way you'll save time only applying materials that actually show up in the shot you've set up. We'll select everything, right click that material, and hit assign material to selection. You can do a quick test again and you'll see that we're still rendering nice and cleanly. All right. So now let's start applying some actual materials. Hit this button to bring up Corona's material library. Frankly, this is one of the big reasons I recommend starting with this over V-Ray, because you don't have to build everything from scratch right away. On the left side, you have all these different categories to create your basic concrete, glass, metals, wood, and more. Definitely play around here for a while, because there's some really cool things you can find in here. So when you want to apply something, you just select the object in the scene, and then you right-click the material you wanted, and hit Assign to Select Object, and boom, you've assigned a material. So I'll normally just move around my scene selecting geometry, seeing what it's named. This one's metal. Then I'll just go find something that corresponds to that. Right click, assign to select objects, and boom. Let's try this one. Select, it's concrete. So therefore let's go find a concrete and apply it. And there you go. It's that easy. But of course, at some point, you're gonna to wanna to adjust these or you're gonna to wanna to customize your own. So to do that, let's jump into Max's editor, which is either this button or M, the hotkey. You've got this little eyedropper tool in the upper left-hand corner. If you click that and then click on an object in your scene, that will bring up the material that's currently applied to it. So let's pause for a minute and jump into this material editor and just go over a couple basics on what we're actually doing in here. If you right click in here, you'll bring up this little menu, which lists all the materials that you can make in Max. Almost all the time, you're gonna to wanna to start with your basic Corona material inside of materials, Corona, Corona material. Selecting that brings up this little box. And this is the actual material. It has its little name at the top and a little preview of what the material actually looks like. And then you have all of these different nodes below, which are slots that you can plug different images into to have different effects on the material. Double clicking on that material brings up the option bar on the right side. Right click on the material and you can hit open preview window. And that's just gonna give you a sort of live preview of how your material currently looks. So on this right side, you have a handful of different options you can play with. The top three being the diffuse settings, the reflection and your refraction. You then have all of these different maps at the bottom, and these correspond to the different nodes that you have here on your actual material. So if you want to change the color, just go up to your diffuse, hit color, and then pick whatever you want. That will change the actual color of the material. 
It opens up this little color selector that I think is pretty straightforward. You can adjust in a whole number of different ways, but it's really up to you to get comfortable with that. If you right click on the material and hit show background and preview, it adds this little background on the side and this is a good way to double check how your reflection is stacking up. Changing that reflection to one is going to give you essentially a perfect reflection like a mirror. Um, which isn't actually that realistic. So often you can drop your glossiness down and that will make it more of a diffuse reflection. Get comfortable turning these on and off and playing with these values because these are essentially what dictate how your material looks and they probably have the biggest impact of all of your settings. Let's jump back to white so that I can show you what refraction does. Refraction is essentially how the light goes through an object. At zero, you're not gonna have any refraction. At 0 0.5, you see we get this sort of milky vibe where it's half letting light through. At one, it's going to go through it perfectly. So let's delete that and create a new one. And I will show you how to make a wood siding texture. Let's open up a new preview for this new material. So now instead of changing the color up on the right in the settings panel, let's drag out from the node at the diffuse color slot. When you let go, it'll open up this little menu Go to Maps, and then Corona, Corona Bitmap. And essentially this is just gonna let you load in any image that you wanna use. So let's grab this wood material, and we now have a wood material. If you double click the image, it gives you a little bit of a bigger preview. Now if you go up to your diffuse slot, you'll see that you have this little M. That means that you have a map coming into the slot rather than the material just relying on that solid color. Removing that node, obviously you go back to the white material. You can now see that down here in the maps, you have this reclaimed wood light brown showing up instead of no map. Double clicking on that map will bring up the settings specifically for that image. And again, you get a whole lot of options here. The big ones that you need to be aware of are this mapping at the top and the tiling options. Most of the time, I like to check use real world scale. And that means rather than having just an arbitrary size associated with it, you can actually say, this image represents 10 feet by 10 feet of real wood siding. And you can then take that material and apply it to your model and it will treat it like it's actually 10 feet by 10 feet. This is a really important one to understand because I think a lot of people have issues with materials that are out of scale. If the image in your diffuse slot isn't tiling and is correctly scaled, you're 70% of the way to have a convincing material. If it isn't to scale, it's always just gonna feel a little lacking and I think it's an easy way to kill your image. So here's a cool trick. If you hold shift while dragging down, you'll create a copy of your material. You can then drag that into your bump slot and change your material from that brown color to reselect and pick a black and white bump map. So let's make our preview a little bigger and you can try to see what's going on here with that. Turn that off and you don't see a ton going on in this preview. Now let's plug that bump map back in. You can see that you got a little bit of a a texture that sort of popped up here on the side. If you click back into your settings for the material and slide down to your maps, you'll have this amount next to bump. Let's crank that up all the way, and that is way too much. Maybe let's tape it out and pack off. I found subtlety is definitely better with these. Um, if you crank these way too much, you'll find that things start to look really weird. So let's turn that back down to one, because I think that will probably be enough. And let's just add a little bit of reflection because no material actually doesn't reflect anything, even though wood isn't really a reflective material. Let's give it a little bit, and but then tone the glossiness down. Yeah, no, it's fine. So I think that would be a decent material. If you want to start getting a little more in depth, you can actually plug in different reflective maps. And this essentially means that the white parts of the image are going to be a little more reflective relative to the darker parts of the image. It is a good thing to sometimes do because not everything will just have uniform reflectivity across it. But again, you don't have to, not every material needs that. So let's now dive back into our project and see how we can apply these things to our actual design. So let's take a look back at that aluminum material that we selected. If you double click on it, you'll bring up your settings for it on the side. And the first thing that I'm gonna notice is that the level for the diffuse is zero, which means it's just black. There is no diffuse. Changing that to one, means that it's gonna be entirely dependent on the color or whatever map you plug into it. So now that we've done that, I can go and change the color to maybe a darker gray rather than a solid black metal. 
So go ahead and try the eyedropper tool on some of the other Corona materials. Take a look at the diffuse, reflection, and refraction settings and see how they're getting their materials set up. I think breaking them and then figuring out how to sort of put them back together is the best way to learn the insides and outs of all these things. For now though, I'd like to take that reclaimed wood material that we were setting up and try to apply it onto our building and see how that goes. So let's make that new material by right clicking, going to materials, Corona, and selecting Corona material drag out on that diffuse slot and select our Corona bitmap. Let's go find that wood material, throw it on there, and now that we have a diffuse material, let's select the geometry in the scene, and then right click and hit assign material to selection. If it doesn't show up for you, you're going to want to right click your material and go down to show shaded material in viewport. And what you can immediately see is that it's way too small, and that's because we haven't set up our material size yet. Double click on that material. Let's check the use real world scale, and let's try 15 by 15. All right, that's looking better, but that's definitely too big. So let's do that 10 foot by 10 foot that we had earlier. Yeah, that's looking better. But you will immediately notice that the planks aren't lining up correctly. The planks on the top face of this geometry aren't lining up with the ones below it. So UV mapping is a fancy term for telling Max how we'd like to wrap our 2D texture around a 3D object. If this book is our wood siding geometry, Max needs to know where we would like to place that texture so that everything lines up and looks correctly. We actually can then move that texture around and rotate it however we want. Max has a ton of tools for this. It can actually get very complicated, but one tool can be used in almost every situation and will be good for our ArcViz workflow. So you wanna select your wood siding geometry and then go to your modifier list then scroll down to UVW map. This stacks on top of your geometry and you can click it on and off to see what the original geometry was. You have a nice list that has different ways that you can wrap that texture around your geometry. Almost all the time I stick to just using a box and I'll check on real world map size. This essentially just grabs the 10 foot by 10 foot dimensions that we set over in the image UV coordinates and passes it on through to the geometry. And you'll notice now that our planks are nice and aligned. If you turn this on and off, you'll see the effects of what it does. If you click the drop down and select gizmo, you'll lock yourself into this mode where you'll be able to move, rotate, and scale the actual 2D texture on the geometry without actually moving the geometry. You do want to be careful with the scaling because it will break that real world link that you had in the material editor. I really try to avoid scaling anywhere else because I like making sure that the size of the material matches up exactly with what I want it to be. Now that we have this set up on our model, let's just go ahead and add that bump map again. Let's also turn up the reflection a little bit and drop that glossiness. And I think we should be good with that material. Let's jump back over to our camera and before we do a test render, let's quickly throw on some stone or brick onto the fireplace. Alright, important tip, if you find that you can't select anything, most likely you are still in the gizmo inside of the UVW map. Just select the top layer and you'll be able to select anything again. So let's apply that brick. I'd also like to apply, and I'd also like to apply my metal to the roof and a couple posts and beams so that they all match. Let's hit render and see what we got. to apply materials onto my designs. There are dozens of ways that you can play with these different settings. Try not to get too hung up on the ticky tacky small details because 
really the diffuse, the reflection, and the refraction, and the bump are going to be the four things that drive almost all of your perception of the material. Focus on making sure that they aren't tiling, that your reflection matches how the material actually behaves in real life. It has a little bit of bump, but not too much bump, and you should have a fairly good time. The next video is all about planting and mostly using Forest Pack Pro. It's a great one because you're finally gonna start to see your design in some context, and it's really gonna help soften up the image. So don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions on anything. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe below to find out when that video is available. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck.